leg chain, get everything moving better. This is what I would do. On the, on the adjustment for the ankle, the, the one adjustment I do is the long axis traction. So what I do, I, I cup the heel of my outside hand and just grab here on top of the metatarsals. Um, it's a long axis traction. So I hold it for about five, seven seconds like that, and then it's impulse. So I'm, my weight is really doing this. I'm not pulling, it's my body weight. And then when I do the adjustment, it's, it's a pull. So I preload with my body weight and adjustment, just impulse like that. And that's a general mobilization. It's also, who's we're doing that for ankle sprain? Who's got the ankle sprain? Uh, doing that for the ankle sprain. That was good. Wow. Felt that. I felt that. <laughs> wow. You want to go and burn them up? No. So, cup it with the outside hand, the tarsals with the inside hand, body weight preload, and then impulse with contraction Forms. of, what am I doing? Biceps. I know. Okay. That's mobilization. Okay. Um, the knee. I don't like doing other than what Tio showed us recently. In fact, I don't really do much of the knee mobilization, so I like what you showed us with the, uh, the knee. Okay. For hip, you could do something similar with the hip that you did to the ankle, except you, sometimes when you do the ankle like that, the hip will go as well. Yeah. But you can also, if you want to focus on the hip, you can do more of an adjustment like this. So I'm kind of supporting above the knee here. Traction and then pull and more focus on a release and then um, yep. FA joint, FA joint rather than this joint. Um, let's see. I don't know how to explain it, but sometimes I don't think about it. You could do this adjustment also for the hip. I'm not sure how to explain the difference <laughs> in the ankle. I guess maybe. Oh, I know what I would do. I'd grab, I wouldn't grab the heel. I'd grab above. And then I would do the, I would do the adjustment like that. And that's going to get the hip. Mm -hmm. so, like the first one you did, that was the same thing as well. Yeah. It's just different video. So, one of them is like this, the heel, and the other is yeah. above. Mm -hmm. That's going to be mm -hmm. for the hip. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's a good hip mobilizer. Obviously, there's some contraindications in this. Oh, someone's going to hip mobilize anything that says you shouldn't do it. But this is a general uh, mobilizer. Some of the things we learned about, like the knee, the way you want to adjust, you want to mobilize the full kinetic chain. So this is some full kinetic chain adjustments. Um, there's actually a big toe adjustment that's helpful. People can get uh, hallux rigidus, but the big toe lacks normal movement and really cannot extend. Um, there was a study. Well, oh, here we go. Here we go. All right, everybody come in. Feel those big toes. I'm sorry. And wash your hands afterwards. They got salt. Compare the flexion on the two big toes. Extreme 
close up. <laughs> Unnecessary close up. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Alright, you feel the difference? Which side's more fixated? Left. Okay. I mean it's just a big difference, right? Big so difference. yeah, my question would be, what'd you ever do to your left? <laughs> Heel, knee, foot, sprain, not soccer. fracture, no. anything you think of? No. He doesn't do anything. Okay. Uh you guys know about functional stuff that you know? What do you, what might be a possible functional explanation for this? Like gait. Yeah, tall. Tall. So. I was in chip. It's got a callus. So, uh, so, excessive towing off on that side, maybe that is contributing to it. It's going to affect his gait pattern. Eventually, he's going to become an ability to really get proper toe off on that side. So, he's going to start to develop a uh, knee walking pattern. I won't be able to adequately push off. <laughs> <laughs> so the adjustment for that, I mean, there was this clinical trial on it, believe it or not. Alex Rigidus, um, it pretty much is what we were just doing. It's, it's mobilizing. So it's like this, it's like this. And then. I mean, it's already a little bit better, but it's still stiff. So you would do that maybe four or five times and adjust it. And people come in with pain. Mm -hmm. They come with pain in the big toe. So the most overlooked thing that students do on the physical exam is inspection and palpation. I'll put range of motion in there too. So, you know, you look at a toe like that, you're like, you know, what's going on? But just range of motion sometimes can help you figure it out. So that's adjustment for toe. Yep. You got the ankle, you got the knee. Hip, my back. So fingers, nothing really. The wrist, I like to do it. I like to look at the two rows of carpal bones. Yep. Not really. No. According to the study. Yeah. Yeah. That the study showed. Uh, I think compared mobilizing the toe only to the toe in the fulcanetic chain. It showed the fulcanetic chain got better results. Toe said that results, but this was the better one. So, following the same principle. The other thing I would do is I would look to see um, if the extensors were oh. problematic. But possibly versus this side, not bad. No. Okay. So I would also work on these muscles here too. Right. So that makes sense. Extensors would be overworked if the toe is kind of stuck. Okay, wrist. I look at the two rows of carpal bones, and I, I mobilize each row independently. So I stabilize the proximal row like that, and I engage the distal row, and I move them up and down, and then I switch it. I stabilize the distal row, and I move the proximal row up and down. And it's a general mobilizer. You'll feel some clicking and popping in there sometimes. Then you get on each bone. And mobilize it. Again, if you're looking for real specific adjustments, I'm not, just not playing. A lot of good videos out there, I'm sure you can watch on that. And same thing on this side. Elbow, just take it to end range and, I mean, you know, careful, you can break it. But sometimes you get it to a little pop. To mobilize, so people with elbows. Okay. And then shoulder for my shoulder. So we do that as a mobilizer. So for extremities, that's about what I do. It sort of fits my philosophy, find what's wrong and fix it. 
and mobilize the joints above and below. Open chain. I probably realistically wouldn't do that much on the shoulder. The shoulder is so complicated, it's not so much a general uh, adjustment joint. I mean, it's, it's got so much going on. And that's kind of it. So your best application is the ankle, the toe, when the problems are there, and then the hip. Stick with the TO protocol on the TO protocol. On the head. TO shoulder? What it means? You want to show us again? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So we go through a range of motion for mobilizations. So for extension, just extend. So we look for um, the patients. Um, <laughs> Patient expressions. <laughs> but some patients have like uh, knee or a they feel uh, feel crepitus and patient feel uh, pain inside a knee. Uh, they discuss the movement. So it's, uh, yeah. and we can add more valgus and rush force while doing the session. So we can push against each other. Is, um, is the most of uh, it's, it's the most um, invasive for a patient with knee or a because um, for bending their press or meniscus. So for my patients, is uh, she complain about this very painful, and so try to back off a little bit, try to not go to the pain range. Let the patient feel the pain. And yeah, so yeah, I, I wouldn't do too much flexion. If you hurt somebody on that, it will be on flexion and they won't come back because it'll really flare it up. So, a little bit extension, ex external rotations and flexions, and also internal rotation flexions as well. So, don't forget about the patella. We can mobilize the media and the turn. Medially, we use the tongue. And laterally, we use the index angle. Sharp. And the other way is because the patella go ups and downs to our knee joint. So, in order to um, mobilize to the cauda, so we use our heel and push it.